Hey guys, so today's video is about antisocial personality disorder versus a sociopath versus a psychopath. And the reason I decided to do this video is I feel like people use these three words interchangeably um, and they are not the same. They are not. So we are going to look at the differences and how this kind of came up is I found like in a lot of um, psychology, not necessarily like textbooks, but um, like books or magazines or things like that, you see these two words, sociopath, uh, psychopath, kind of thrown around a lot and just in conversation as well, like people might be like, oh, he's a total psychopath, he's a total sociopath, you know, but are they really and what is the difference and what does it mean? So that's what we're going to kind of look at today. So the way that I did this is, so people who don't know, um, I worked, I'm a, I'm a trans scientist and I worked in a um, lab for three years. So research is like, I know how to do research. And um, so what I did is I found a ton of journal articles. Um, if you guys are looking for some, EBSCOhost is a great resource as well as Google Scholar, um, which um, allows you access to all different types of things. And then I read through all of them. So this is like a stack of like some. So this is what I do in my spare time. So, but let's dive into what I found. So, if we look at the DSM criteria of antisocial personality disorder, for somebody to have antisocial personality disorder, that's kind of what they have to exhibit and they have to fit that criteria. Um, so when we look at a sociopath or a psychopath, what is the difference? So the main thing is antisocial personality disorder does not mean that somebody is a sociopath or a psychopath. However, everyone that is a sociopath or a psychopath does have antisocial personality disorder. And how we differentiate that is the sociopath and the psychopath are the aggressive, very violent people who have antisocial personality disorder. It is not all of them. Um, it is just that small amount, right? So now we have the very violent and dangerous offenders are called sociopaths and psychopaths. So that's where those words come from. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, the way that we tell the difference is by using a um, site. So it's like a test for psychopathic traits. So um, it's called the PCL checklist. It and this would be um, somebody interviewing this person and seeing if they meet um, the criteria. But like the main things are lack of guilt or victim empathy is required um, to be a psychopath, but not for antisocial personality disorder. So somebody with antisocial personality disorder may still feel guilty about the things that they've done. However, a psychopath will not. The other difference, so a psychopath is born like that. A sociopath is created from their environment. And the way they can see this is actually through brain scans. So sociopaths and normal populations, even the most violent sociopaths, um, have similar brain scans. You know, there's not a lot of difference in the reactivity going on in their brain. However, when we look at a psychopath and a normal kind of person, or even a sociopath, the brain scans are completely different. Um, the psychopath brain is not lit up in the same areas, specifically the prefrontal um, lobes and cortex of the brain is not lit up like it is in a normal human, which is funny because that part, well, it's not funny, but it's, that's the part of the brain that associates with like empathy and compassion and creativity. And that's really where kind of like the life is, you know, or at least like the good stuff. Um, so um, when, it, when people have injury to that, their personality changes and they become more, um, you know, violent and sociopathic and psychopathic, well, psychopath is born. So it's actually called acquired sociopathic syndrome. That's the name of it because they weren't born like that, right? It was created because of life circumstances and things like that. So that's like a very interesting thing, right? That's going on in our brain. I don't know. There are some people I think I'd like to see brain scans of, right? And every psychopath will fulfill the criteria for antisocial personality disorder. However, 
people with antisocial personality disorder will not be a psychopath. Um, to be a psychopath, you have to have antisocial personality disorder with the addition of a set of interpersonal and affective features, including superficial charm, manipulativeness, callous, and shallow effect. Now, what is shallow effect? And I've seen this in real life. This is like so interesting. Okay. Shallow effect is like saying or trying to portray that you're like, um, like a certain way but like you can see that it's not there. It's kind of like a superficial like fakeness. I don't know how to kind of like, okay, you know, like when I'm talking right now, you can see like my look, my eyes light up and you can tell like the emotion that I'm portraying is what I'm feeling. A shallow effect is being like, there's no one home kind of, even though I'm trying to make it seem like an emotion. Does that make sense? So like, um, for example, maybe I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm like, it's just, it's just like that there's, you know, like when you talk to somebody and you're like, I got a weird vibe, like they were giving me a weird vibe because they're kind of just like shut off like this. I don't know. That's my attempt at having a shallow effect. It's kind of like that. Um, that's the best way I guess I could put shallow effect, uh, which is like very interesting because, you know, to me, that's kind of that prefrontal cortex, right? That like empathy and like um, showing emotion in truly feeling for somebody or being involved in a conversation and if you're not having that stimulation in your frontal brain how can you even be involved you know and and it does get scary because a true psychopath that isn't having that activation in the prefrontal cortex it's kind of scary because they really don't feel emotion however it is interesting because there is um the scientists that discovered this actually, that the brain scans were different in psychopaths, discovered that his brain was the brain of a psychopath. However, he never had violent tendencies, he never was in trouble with the law, but in the interview, you know, he does talk about how his wife was like, that doesn't surprise me at all. There's things that like don't phase you, that phase everybody else. So it's kind of that, that disconnect, right? Like they just, they're a little disconnected. Um, so it's interesting, and if you guys get a chance, um, I, I can link it below, but if you can check out the PCL checklist, it's pretty interesting to see. Um, somebody that has antisocial personality disorder will typically score a 20 to 22 out of 40 on the psychopath scale. A psychopath is going to score a 30 or above out of 40. So that kind of shows that they're... Um, Someone who is a psychopath will fulfill all those things of antisocial personality disorder, but somebody with antisocial personality disorder will not fulfill all those things of being a um, psychopath. And again, a sociopath and a psychopath do fall under the antisocial personality umbrella. Um, however, they're different. They're different things. Um, but you now we don't realize that in this world, like, okay, for example, for a long time in my life, you know, I thought that people were a result of situation um, and that there weren't bad people. There were just people that made wrong decisions. And I still do believe that to a point. Um, but, you know, I mean, looking at these things that the brain is, the activation of the brain is different. It's, it's just like it's scary. It's scary because when you have someone that doesn't have these parts of the brain that are being activated and then you mix that with a traumatic childhood, I mean, you created a monster and that's really what it comes down to, you know, scary, scary stuff. And you know, this isn't everybody you see every day or some guy that was mean to you in line at Starbucks or something like this is serious stuff. And, um, you know, I think just being respectful that people do have these illnesses and, you know, knowing the difference over here. All right, guys, so that was my little video on antisocial personality disorder versus a psychopath versus a sociopath. So, um, and like I told you guys, if there's any kind of videos that you're interested in, let me know. I love researching things, obviously. Obviously, this is what I do in my free time is just read journal articles about things. I have like 
binders and binders full. It's pretty crazy. Um, I clearly have no life. So if you want me to research something and let you know about it, please comment below or send me an email and I would love to do that for you. So all right, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe below and give it a thumbs up and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Bye.